right. Well, hi, everyone, and good afternoon. We are so happy you're here uh, for our Topical Tuesday. Um, today's topic is our is School Library Connection, and I am happy to welcome Pam and Jane from School Library Connection to our Topical Tuesday session. Um, just please keep your microphone muted when you aren't speaking. There will be time for you to unmute and ask questions. I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing so that they can share. And all right, it's all, right. all you guys. All right, let me Good get Good afternoon, out. everybody. It's great to be here. It is wonderful to be with you. I want to make sure I'm doing this correctly. I'm not real familiar with Google Meet. Are you seeing my slide now? We are good. Okay, excellent, excellent. So I have with me the expert today. You all are, are just in for a real treat. Uh, and we have Jane with us today. Uh, my name is Pam Renfro. I work on the curriculum development and customer success uh, sides of things. But Jane Kalina is actually, we could call her Miss SLC because she manages the professional development department and she is has a strong influence in creating School Library Connection. So we're excited uh, to have her with us. And she's going to be, uh, she'll be doing the majority of the things today. Uh, but I'll get us started just a little bit with a refresher. We're going to have about um, 30 minutes with you today. Of course, we want your questions along the way. So if you want to put those in the chat, uh, Jane will be watching that while I'm presenting and I'll watch it while she's presenting. But we really want to talk about uh, four things. We want to make sure that you are very familiar with what School Library Connection is and that you have access to it, what you're going to find when you get inside, uh, School Library Connection. And then Jane is going to talk to you about what's new and upcoming in School Library Connection. And then she's going to get some feedback from you uh, to frame and to uh, shape the way School Library Connection looks going forward. So this is a great opportunity uh, for her to, to get some information from you. Of course, all along the way, we want to invite you to ask any questions and we'll hope to provide you with the answers to those. So just what is School Library Connection? We call it SLC for short, but what is that? I think librarians are just known for those acronyms. Uh, School Library Connection is three, simply three things. It's a professional learning that's available to you 24-7. And we mean that because we know that you are run uh, very busy schedules and often you think of questions and they come to you in the night. Right. You're you're trying to get a good night's sleep, but then you're you're you have questions. So you can always come to School Library Connection uh, to find the answers to questions. And what's wonderful about it, it is actually created and uh, presented to you by librarians. So you're a librarian and this is kind of a way of building a community for you because you have access to uh, different editors and can pose questions to them. And uh, everyone that contributes is either currently a school librarian or is in the university teaching pre-service librarians or maybe just recently retired. So we are also a premier source for you for resource reviews. And we know in the state of Florida, uh, that's particularly important right now. And uh, the, the reviews that we have are by school librarians. And we'll, I'm gonna show you today uh, how to become a reviewer if you're interested in that. So that's what SLC is. Uh, what are you going to find when you get in? And we're going to take a look at that. But just briefly, what you're going to find are these things. In-depth in depth exploration of very critical topics. Uh, what's in the news and what, what's trending. On-demand courses for you to build your skills and webinars that really explore key issues. And what I love about webinars, they're one hour of your time and they present new, exciting and fresh ideas uh, without a, a great commitment of time from you. You're gonna find advice and inspiration and new research. Uh, you're gonna find those reviews for those latest released books and lesson plans and list and a way for you to curate your own content because we know that's important. Uh, and we're gonna show you how to do that. So I'm gonna hop right into School Library Connection now. 
and you should be able to come in through your portal uh, and, and come right into the resources. Now, I like to think about School Library Connections homepage as being kind of like um, the Apple Store, right? You go into the Apple Store and you see a few things, but it's not, not everything they have. You know, you actually buy something, they go in the back and bring it out. So the homepage to me is, is like that. It is a showcasing of a fresh new materials, but yet on the back end, we're a database. So all of the articles and information that have ever been created for School Library Connection is very easily searchable in that search box. So we'll take a look at that. But just looking at uh, the homepage, I wanted to point out some key features if you're new uh, to utilizing the resource. And this is a relatively new feature, of, and Jane can tell us exactly, but probably about a year, a year and a half old, that uh, the, there was a redesign and trying to make the uh, resource very usable for you. We felt like that there were kind of three, three areas in your career where you are. You're either brand new and you're learning the basics and you might be new to uh, education altogether, or you may just be new to libraries. Maybe you've spent a lot of time in an English language arts classroom, uh, but now uh, you are in the library and uh, you need, need some information about just the very basic things. Or maybe you're kind of like me, you've been around a long time, uh, but you want to stay fresh and you want to continue to grow your skills, or maybe you're like Lisa and you're a supervisor. So there, these are learning tracks. And so I'm going to open up Grow Your Skills just to, again to show you this, this page, again, is a showcase of items. So this changes um, pretty often. And, we, and uh, Jane's team features uh, a timely topic. And I think this goes right along with things you are facing there in Florida. Uh, the feature right now is on censorship. So you're going to find articles and information about how to avoid that. And then we're featuring a new course uh, on how to effectively search. Courses are about three hours professional development time. You can see that they're video based. Um, and so it allows you to take the whole course or in one sitting if you have a professional development day. But more often, you're probably going to go into this course and you're going to uh, take it a little at a time. Or maybe you just want to, to, to watch pieces of it and you're not going to try to get credit for that. So you don't want the entire course. So we make it very flexible in how you go about learning. And then we have those webinars we were talking about earlier. These are always uh, there live, but then they're recorded. So you have access to the recordings here. You can see all of them that are available in what we feel like this track is. Uh, you'll get all the materials and you'll have the recording. And again, they're about an hour of your time. And then you're always going to find um, additional information here in, in the form of articles. Uh, and this again is going to change every month or so, you're going to see some changes here. So I want to come back to that homepage. I'm going to try not to make you dizzy. I just wanted to show you, you can move around. I think that Jane's team has just done a phenomenal job of making this easy to navigate and to move around in within the sections. I'm going to come back to the homepage and just show you a couple other features. Looks like I timed out. Let me come back in. You see uh, topics, and I think Jane will probably talk a little bit about this, but here, I said earlier, you have access to six different editors. Each one of their pages uh, allows you to email them your questions. So again, a really a good sense of a learning community for you uh, with these librarians that are from all across the United States. You're always going to find featured reviews. And I, want, I always like to point out my two favorite, uh, I think they're my favorite features are the one question survey, because these are the kind of questions that would always pop up to me, you know, while you're uh, trying, you know, working with students, but you get this question in your mind and you want to come in um, and take a look. These, this is done by two of our librarians in Kentucky. They, they pose a question and they allow you to submit 
your answer. And then they're going to give you the completed survey with, again, additional resources uh, to help you with, with that topic. So I love the one question survey and I love Dear Dara. Uh, these are uh, questions that, that are often come to your mind. And I think they really help you uh, see your role in the school in the day to day. Upcoming webinars are listed here as well as how to become a reviewer. Uh, you can find out more about that here and writing for us uh, information there in the About Us section. Again, we said this is a database. So just like any database, you can do a search at the top of any of your screens. I'm going to do a search quickly on a co collection development. Um, and just to show you that you will get a lot of resources when you do that search. And then you're going to find that those resources are in different formats. Um, those formats would be articles, courses, webinars, and then you can also filter those by date or by how they would fit in your learning track or your path in your career. So again, those courses are going to be about three hours professional uh, development time and then webinars. So if I wanted to take a look at webinars and articles uh, from the last three years, I could do that and apply those uh, filters and filter my results that way. Remember that I wanted to point out that you have the ability to save information. It looks like my internet's running a little slowly right now, but you can always add items to a resource list. And that allows you to uh, save information. I'm going to clear that out and just go back to uh, my results. Let's see if it'll let me do that. Let's do that one more time. And um, build a list because we know that you uh, your day is probably really sectioned out. You, you get started on something and then you have to quickly move to the next thing. And so this, any of our resources will allow you to save them to look at later. So that would be by adding them to a resource list. And then that list would reside in my place under your resource list. So you can gather all of your resources, uh, you know, that you want to take a look at later and have them in one spot. Additionally, you can do the same thing with reviews. Reviews is a great location for you to come and take a look at uh, reviews of student resources as well as professional resources. You'll see that we always have those top picks for the month and then featured items here. And you can do the same thing with those uh, reviews. So if you want, uh, you're looking at this review uh, and you decide this might be a book that you would like to add to your list, you can add that here to your product list, and that would, again, reside in the product list available to you. I want to come back to reviews real quickly and point out one more thing, and then I'm going to turn it over to Jane. I want to make sure that you're aware of these educator guides. Here, uh, Jane's team has done a phenomenal job of looking at middle and high school uh, novels and created lesson plans and activities to go along with those. And you find them on the reviews page as well as they are searchable within the database. So know that those are there. They're fabulous. Great ways for you to work with uh, your English language arts teachers. We also have a wonderful digital resource reviews. Sometimes they're free things like the Smithsonian National Air and Space Museum. Sometimes they might be uh, something that is fee-based, uh, but know that those are there. And again, how you can uh, learn more about our review process, as well as how you could become a reviewer. So I'm going to uh, turn this back to Jane and let her talk to you just a few minutes about what's new and upcoming. Wonderful. Thank you, Pam, so much for that overview of all the great things on SLC. And I'm going to focus on three main pieces of new and upcoming resources available for you. And I will share my screen to do that. 
Um, so the first thing that I want to talk about is our podcast that we began last year. So last year was the first season of it, and we've just started season two. And the podcast is, a, is an audio conversation. It's usually between 20 and 30 minutes long, and it's available on the curriculum topic page. So you can get to it by using the explore topic and clicking on curriculum or on this um, section of the homepage, clicking on curriculum. And this is our new host this year, Steve Tatro. And one thing that I love about Steve is that he is a, he's a very experienced educator. He's been working in the classroom for over 20 years, but he's actually a relatively new librarian. And so he recently, I think a year and a half ago, completed his um, degree and is now the librarian at the school that he used to be an English teacher at. But he is so dedicated to, to learning as much as he can about how to be the best librarian possible. And so one of the ways that he brings us along on that journey is through this podcast where he's talking to other librarians across the country and they focus on one particular lesson that or, or unit that was taught by the guest librarian. And then the conversation also really brings up a lot of best practices in general. So in the inaugural episode of this season, which came out on September 15th, um, Steve spoke with Casey Boyd, who's a librarian in Washington, DC, and was actually the winner of the SLJ Librarian of the Year Award this year. And they talk about a lesson that Casey's done for the past several years for Bullying Prevention Month. And it really focuses on how students can build empathy, how they can recognize when bullying is happening, either they're doing it or they're seeing it as a, as a bystander and how they can become an upstander. And some of this is, a lot of the lesson also focuses heavily on digital citizenship and what does it look like when you're um, encountering bullying online. And they were inspired to do it because of uh, observations they made about their middle school students coming in at the beginning of the year. And so she collaborates with a social worker and a PE teacher from her school to, to do this unit. And you can listen to the conversation you can read a little bit more background from Steve, and then you can also check out the lesson plan itself if it is something that you want to explore. And so in the lesson plan, it talks about um, the materials that she used. And, you know, as with anything, you're going to adapt it to your own needs. But this can be a, a starting point if you are needing inspiration for uh, teaching about building digital citizenship and empathy with students as well. And so just uh, one other thing I want to point out about the podcast is that in the episode itself, if you um, listen to it and you to take a look at the lesson plan, you can also take a quiz. And so this was just added actually yesterday. So this is brand new to uh, the website and I'm excited that we're able to share it with you today. But the PD certification quiz, it's similar to the webinars and the courses where you just have to answer, oh, let me make sure that's showing. Um, answer a few questions that shows that you did take in the information, and then it'll give you a, a print-on-demand certificate that you can submit. So, uh, and I welcome if you have any questions. I am not adept at Google Meet to be seeing the questions at the same time as I'm showing the screen, but Pam will be sure to keep an eye on them. So please, if you have any questions, uh, do ask them as, as I'm talking. Um, and Pam, you can feel free to interrupt me as well if anything comes in. So to find the podcast, you can, like I mentioned, the latest episode is going to be on the curriculum page. You can also search in the search bar. It's called One Lesson at a Time. So you could search that uh, or you could search. Oh, Jane, we're podcast. still on the start quiz. Oh, sorry. That's okay. Thank you. Uh, and thanks for your, your patience as I'm becoming learning Google Meet better. So now can you see the search page? Yep, you were good. Okay, great. So here's going to be a list of some of the past episodes. If you want to catch up on um, season one, where our host was Courtney Pentland, a librarian in Nebraska, you can go back and check those uh, episodes as well. And you can always filter by the, the audio category um, if you want to search for it. You know, is there one where they talk about with working with science teachers, you could you could search that and then filter by audio. So that's one feature that I wanted to 
to highlight and the new episodes come out every around the 15th of the month. So this week, the 15th is a Saturday. So it'll be coming out on Friday, the 14th. And um, we typically will announce it on our SLC Twitter as well. Another new area that I wanted to share was, and I'm going to use the search for this, um, a new column by the librarian Jennifer Lagarde, which began So I'm, I searched her name and then I'm 15 by date to show the, late, the latest one. Um, and this new column is focused on developing digital detectives. So information literacy, but specifically around digital resources. And she's got a really um, dynamic take on it and has a lot of very like practical advice that you can put into place right away. So her most recent column, I think looks at a very important question that is hopefully relevant or maybe not hopefully but probably relevant to uh, a lot of you all right now which is how do we engage parents in helping their kids become digital detectives while not opening up a politicized hornet's nest so how do you have these conversations where uh, the parents are coming to it and they're not feeling attacked because you're saying well you're looking at the wrong news sources or something like that and so she's got some really practical advice in this column so uh, again, I encourage you to keep your eyes out for those. They come out once every other month, her column, and you'll find it both by searching for her name, Jennifer Lagarde, or on the homepage at the bottom is where a lot of new, uh, in addition to the upcoming webinars, the newest articles that have been published appear here as well. So you'll see that her, her column rotate in through there, as well as columns by uh, our other authors. So definitely we, we work hard to continue to always provide um, new resources in, in many different formats, including articles. And then the third upcoming piece that I want to talk about is the our next two upcoming webinars. So we have about one webinar a month during the school year and our next webinar is Monday, the 24th of October, and it's being presented by Amanda Jones, Courtney Pentland, and Melissa Tom, three dynamic librarians from different locations in the US. And they're gonna be talking about how do you sustain joyful reading in a time of book challenges? So something that, how do you, how do you keep focus on getting students excited about reading when there is a lot of potential drama going on on the, on the back end in terms of being having to be mindful of book challenges that may be in place or um, other threats to, to intellectual freedom. So we encourage you to sign up and you can always find the next upcoming webinars here at the bottom of the page. And just by clicking on register here, it's gonna take you to the registration page. You can read more about the specific webinar and then you just fill in your, your contact information here and it will register you. If you can't make it at live for the actual webinar, I still encourage you to register because you will be able to then get the follow-up email that says the recording is available, check it out when you have time. So even if you aren't able to make it to the live webinar, we encourage you to sign up. And then the November webinar that we have coming up is with a librarian from Richmond, Virginia, Wendy DeGroat, and she's talking about engaging students with scholarly articles. So how do you what strategies can you use to help students um, tackle these, these resources that can be a little more challenged? So this challenging. So this topic is more for seven through 12 librarians um, as opposed to elementary school, but the, the one in October is for all librarians. So that is, those are three content pieces that I wanted to highlight for upcoming areas. And uh, I guess I'll, okay, now I'm going to stop sharing for a moment, come over to the window and just see if anybody has questions before I ask a few feedback questions. So uh, any any questions about any of those pieces or anything else on SLC? I have not seen anything in the chat yet. Okay. Well, if you do, don't don't uh, hesitate to pop, pop your questions in. And I have a few questions for you. As Pam mentioned, we're always looking to improve and develop, further develop SLC's resources. And so to that end, um, can you see now the questions on a slide? One question, I mean. 
Yep, we're good. Great. So uh, this question is, you know, in, in this digital environment, we have the ability to have different types of medium to share, including articles, including video, including audio. And I'm curious to hear if what your preferred mediums are when you're looking for that on-demand professional learning. Obviously, that in the ideal world, we're always able to connect in real time with people. But when when we're looking for for answers or ideas or inspiration in our own time, are there what's your preferred vehicle for getting that information? you don't mind sharing in the chat. So Jane, so far we see um, articles and audio, and now we just had someone say video. Wonderful, yeah, I find for myself it, it is, um, sometimes it depends on what it is, you know, if it's like something that's a little more hands-on, sometimes I really like the video, but other, other more theoretical topics, sometimes I like the articles, so. This is great to, to get the feedback and, and thank you for sharing. Yeah, April, I see your comment about the, the videos can be time consuming and I definitely appreciate that about, um, about articles and being able to kind of go at my own pace and scan them it can go a little bit quicker. Great, thank you. Okay, I've got, you can continue answering that question but I will also Move on to the next question, which is uh, what are the most pressing topics that you're looking for resources about at this moment in time? So if you were what, yeah, what topics are kind of top of mind for you that you would love to read more about? Ooh, Lisa, yes, the manga reviews. <laughs> it's a, definitely an area that we're, we're looking into developing that capacity. Yes, wonderful. So definitely it looks like resource reviews in general, not specifically the manga. So the manga is really for my, for my, for the most part, for my middle school and high school librarians, but the elementary kids want it too. Mm. So if we could find a way to find age appropriate manga, it would be fantastic. Yeah, definitely. Some some are definitely not appropriate for that elementary school age, but that's a publishing idea right there. Wonderful. Thank you for the for the input. And then um, my final question, so sort of aligned, similar in the sense of what would you like to see more of on SLC if there's any particular, um, you know, product features, like ways of using the website or, um, again, topics or anything else that you can think of that you're like, oh, this would really make me excited to, to discover it on SLC. I would love to see some like lesson plans for our newer librarians mm. uh, that would really help them tweak to their own needs because it's such a it's such a big leap from the classroom into the library yeah and maybe like collections of one of, of the lesson plans that are really geared towards towards newer librarians yeah and then april just said uh ways of collaborating and enticing teachers to bring their classrooms mm. uh to the library yeah, that's a that's can be a challenge, and I feel like that's a a topic that never really goes away because it's always always something that needs no, it, it gets harder. It gets harder and harder with the more of the testing we have. Yeah, uh, so ways to entice them in um, that will align with what they need to achieve with testing. Hmm. It's it's not a, you know right they don't have to give up the teaching of those standards and those the curriculum they can do that together. Yeah. Great. Yeah, and, and Maria, thank you for the point about the customizing and I think Pam's showing of the of the resource list that's a really crucial tool that you can use to you know when you when you find that piece you're like oh I don't have time to read this right now but I know I want to come back to it or I want to, I know I want to share this with other librarians, that that's a great way to kind of 
market because there is a lot of material on SLC and books that align with units of instruction. Great. So in, in that case, April, just a follow up question. Do you mean like um, fiction or nonfiction or both? Well, thank you for uh, adding adding in your ideas. And I see that we have come up upon the half hour mark. So I don't want to I don't want to go over, but I am really appreciative for the feedback. And I hope that you will take advantage of what SLC has to offer and use it to find find help when you need it and inspiration. All right, I'm gonna take over sharing from Jean. Jean and Pam, thank you so much for taking time out of your day today to join us. I'm gonna go ahead and share. Thank you so okay. much for inviting us and let us know if you have questions in the future. All right. All right, well, please keep tagging us uh, on Twitter. We love to see everything that you're doing. Um, you guys are doing such amazing things and it really puts a smile on my face when I get to see everything that's going on in your libraries. We wish we could be with you guys each and every day. And this gives us a glimpse into what's going on and just know that the leadership in the district is watching and they love to see what you're doing. Um, if you want points, um, register at e-learning. Even if you cannot attend a session, you can always catch it on video. Uh, that also counts for the points, so don't worry about that. Once you have clicked launch from e-learning, your attendance is good that way. Uh, there's only one culminating follow-up activity and you can get 20 points. It's a great easy way uh, to get your PDD points. Uh, next session is October 18th and we're going to be discussing Florida Power Library, what that is and uh, how you can go about applying. Um, and how you can use it as an advocacy tool with your administration. That I'm going to stop recording.